Hello, I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com and today we're going to do a really incredible experiment where you're actually going to be able to counteract the force of gravity or defy the force of gravity with very, very simple materials. So here's what you need to do. You need to get yourself a copper pipe. Now you can get these from the hardware store, almost any hardware store you could find copper pipes of different dimensions. So this is a regular old copper pipe. It is hollow in the middle. You'll also need a magnet. Any kind of magnet will work. This particular kind of magnet is called a rare earth magnet or a neodymium magnet is another word for it. It just means this magnet is very strong. The stronger the magnet, the better this is going to work. Now before we get started, I just want to show you really quickly how strong this magnet is. This is a, a, a pair of pliers here. Whenever I attract it to the pliers here, you can see that it's attracted there here. When I grab it and try to pull it off, this magnet is quite strong. And that's because of the special way that these magnets are made. Uh, you can buy these magnets for a couple dollars online. Just type in neodymium magnet or you can type in rare earth magnet and you'll be able to find them. Now the interesting thing here is copper is not magnetic. Copper does not react to magnets. So this magnet, as strong as it is, you can see there's no trickery going on here. This magnet just falls right off. Now you could see a minute ago how strong it was when we attracted it to the pliers over there. It's a different metal. Some magnets or some metals are magnetic and some are not. So what we're going to do is just cut right to the chase. As you can see, this is a hollow uh, tube. There's nothing inside of it. There's no trickery here. It's just a solid copper pipe. Now before we get started, I'm going to show you here's a copper penny. So the reason I'm using this penny is because I want to show you to get you used to what this is going to look like when we drop something through this tube. So listen for it very carefully. It goes right down and it pops out the other side. And we'll do it one more time just to show you. It goes right down there, maybe one second or so. We'll go right one more time, maybe one second or so. So let's put that to the side. Obviously that's just a penny, that's not magnetic. Here's our magnet, but we already said this is not magnetic at all, right? Now let's see what happens when we drop a magnet inside and listen and watch carefully. Look at that. It took a few more seconds, didn't it? Let's count as we do it. Here we go. One, two, three, four. About four seconds. One more time. Here we go. One, two, three, four. About four seconds for this magnet to go down this hollow copper tube. When it takes a penny, roughly, one second to fall through. How in the heck can that happen? That is, is, is really almost magical. If you show this to anybody, they will do it. They will do it again and again and again and completely be astounded. At first you think it's a trick. You think maybe I've coated the inside of this tube with something that's magnetic. But when you think about it, that doesn't make sense. If this magnet, look at these pliers. If this, if this copper had any kind of magnetic lining or if it was a trick a trick or something, the magnet would just stick to it. It wouldn't fall down, but you can see clearly whenever we do this experiment that the magnet is kind of tumbling and it's just going slower. It's just falling slower than it normally would. Now to bring this home even more, I have another one of these magnets. It's identical. You can see I have two of these guys here. In fact, there they go. They attract together. They're the same magnet, right? Same size, same everything. And to bring it home even more, what I'm going to do is drop one of them through the copper tube and we'll drop the other one through this clear plastic tube that I have. And this clear plastic tube is the same height here. So what we're going to do is lift them off the table and on the count of three we're going to see which one hits first. One, two, three. And you can see that the guy coming through the plastic tube falls straight through. The guy going through the copper tube takes a lot longer. We'll do it one more time on the count of three. One, two, three. And there you go. You can see the difference there. So now it's time to talk about how this happens because it, it seems like magic. What you need in order to understand how this works is two pieces of information that most people just don't know about how magnets work and about how electricity works. Once you understand those two pieces of information, then how this thing works is very easy to understand. The first piece of information is, well, 
I guess there's three pieces of information. The first piece of information, you have to know that copper conducts electricity. We all know this because the wires in your house are all made of copper. Most wiring is made of copper. It conducts electricity. You might say, well, how does electricity have to do with any of this? This is the magnet. Well, when you start studying electricity and magnetism, you're going to find out that magnetism and electricity are really, really closely related. In fact, you can use magnets to generate electricity. And that's exactly how power plants work. When you have a power plant, you have a generator. We've probably heard of a generator, right? So what happens is you have, if it's a, if it's a hydroelectric plant, you have water that's turning a generator in, in a river. Or if it's a, a coal plant, you're basically using the coal to heat up a bunch of water into steam, and that steam turns a generator. Well, if you cut open a generator, what you're going to see is a bunch of magnets and a bunch of copper wire. And somehow that arrangement creates electricity. The bottom line is, if you have a magnetic field, which is what is invisible and it's surrounding this really powerful magnet, it's going through my fingers right now, it's called a magnetic field. If you take a magnetic field and run it across a piece of copper, if you move it across a piece of copper, then what you're going to get is electric currents generated in that copper. And that's how our generators work. But the, th the same thing is happening here. So as the copper, uh, as the magnet is falling, gravity's pulling it down, the magnetic field is moving through the copper and it's sliding across the copper. That motion generates electric currents inside this copper pipe. They just kind of circulate around as the magnet is falling. So that's fact number one. When you have a magnet, and it moves across a copper conductor or any conductor of electricity, you have an electric current, a little bitty tiny currents basically, inside of that conductor that are generated, right? If you could somehow peer inside, you would see those currents. That's fact number one. Fact number two, which is separate, is that any time you have an electric current flowing in anything, that electric current also produces its own magnetic field, right? So what you have here is a two-stage process. When we drop the magnet in, you have electric currents gener generated in this pipe, right? That's, that's part number one. The second part is those little bitty tiny electric currents are generating their own little tiny magnetic field. And here's the punchline. The tiny little magnetic field generated by the little tiny currents in there are repelling this magnet that's falling and trying to prevent it from, from going any faster. They're basically trying to slow it down. So as this thing falls, little tiny electric currents are generated in the copper. Those tiny electric currents are making its own magnetic field, which are pushing up against this magnet. So yes, this copper is not magnetic. It's not repelling. But as soon as it starts moving, a tiny magnetic field is generated in here that pushes up on that magnet and slows it down. And that's why, you know, instead of a penny, which takes about, you know, one, one second to go through here, you know, this guy takes one, two, three four to come out, right? Now that, that's part number one of what I wanted to show you today. Part number two is I wanted to get a larger pipe. So you can actually kind of see this pipe is exactly the same size as the other pipe, except that it has a larger diameter. Here I have a, a larger diameter magnet, right? Here I have a larger di diameter magnet that I'm going to place inside of this guy. Let me ask you this. Do you think this effect is going to be better or not as good? in this particular case. The answer is it's going to actually work better. Let's just see if that takes, if that, if that is true. Let's drop it in there and we'll just count. Here we go. On your mark, get set. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it finally dropped out. Eight seconds, right? Eight seconds compared to about four seconds for the other one. Why do you think it works better? It's because Whenever these little electric currents are generated, they're generated, they're, they're stronger, basically, they're stronger if the magnet that's falling through is physically closer to the conductor. So you can see this magnet here is almost exactly the same size of this conductor. It's very, very close to this conductor size, okay? So that means the magnetic field, as it falls, is going to be stronger, is it's going to generate uh, it's going to generate better electric currents, and that's going to push more strongly on this guy. Now, for our grand finale, we'll do it both times. Here we have our plastic tube. Here we have our copper pipe. And what we'll do is we'll just drop them both in, and we'll count them. We'll drop them both in sideways like this, just to make it just to make it fair. So here you go. On your mark, get set. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. And it finally falls through. And you can see a dramatic difference. So the bottom line is, for this effect to work, you need a magnet. The stronger the magnet, the better. You need a copper pipe. And the effect works better if the diameter of this, of this magnet that you drop is very close to the diameter of the copper pipe. You can amaze kids with this. You can amaze adults with this. It's something that most people cannot fathom how it works because this magnet here is not attracted to this copper pipe. But what's actually happening is, is once that magnet starts moving, a magnetic field is generated from those currents in that copper that are generated, and that magnetic field pushes up on the magnet. So go and get these materials. You only need two materials, very easy to find, and you can do a really, really neat experiment that demonstrates how magnets can interact with conductors and create electric currents and create magnetic fields, and it's a real hands-on way to see how that works.